Good morning, welcome to Durham Cathedral for this quiet day in which we've set time aside to think and to pray about our care of God's creation. I'm Nicholas Holton. Until I retired nearly two years ago, I was the Bishop of Salisbury and the Church of England's lead bishop on the environment. It's a real joy to be with you today. I think that the picture that has most changed our understanding of the world in which we live in my lifetime is this photograph of Earthrise from uh, above the barren surface of the moon taken, it was Christmas Eve 1968. And one of the astronauts, William Anders, said 50 years later that they went thinking that they were going to explore the moon, but what they discovered was the Earth this fragile blue planet on which we dwell and for which we have a really profound responsibility of care in the creation that God has made. Because for us in this fast expanding universe, there is no planet B. Um, today is also Earth Day. For 30 years, people have been keeping Earth Day as a way of just reminding us uh, of the way in which we need to care sustainably for creation uh, and to, as it were, have a day a year to tidy up, to be clean, to think about how we live and, and responsibly to look after that which God has given us. I was thinking about um, the early days of lockdown uh, in preparation for this quiet day and remembering how in at that spring everything was so quiet and still and seemed to have a freshness of life and it's quite an important reminder to realise that the amount of change that's needed from us is the equivalent of that every year for the next 10 years. There's a professor in Reading called Ed Hawkins and Ed's created what are called um, global warming stripes to show uh, how global warming uh, is impacting. Uh, here in 1840 in Reading, uh, and a stripe for every year, the dark blue being the cooler years, the bright red being the hotter years, and the hottest years, the 12 hottest years since 2002 through to 2018, um, uh, here showing that there's been warming of over one, just over one degree centigrade in this period. Uh, the 14 hottest years on record in the UK uh, have been since 2002. And of course, last year was an absolute scorcher. Uh, and <clears throat> what we also experience globally is more extreme weather events uh, with uh, the impact of hurricanes and typhoons uh, of really extreme rainfall and drought of wildfires uh, and this becoming so much more common that it's really difficult for uh, people to live with. It's having an impact on where people live uh, and on our mortality and health. Uh, this is big change. One degree C doesn't sound a lot but um, uh, this is uh, having an impact where uh, we've uh, had to come to international agreements to try to limit global warming by no more than two degrees C on pre-industrial levels uh, and uh, to aim for 1.5 degrees C because this is impacting on the melting of the ice cap, uh, on the extreme weather uh, and we've got to find ways of reducing the temperature rise that we human beings are causing. Uh, there's an environmentalist, Gus Speth, who uh, said that he used to believe that the top environmental problems were biodiversity loss, uh, environmental degradation, species collapse and climate change. But he, he, and he thought that 30 years of good science could fix that. But he now realises that the top environmental problems are selfishness, greed and apathy. And he says that scientists don't know how to fix that. It's a spiritual problem. Um, I think faith is a huge resource coming into 
uh, how we deal with what does need a technical and scientific fix and is a political problem, but is also a deeply spiritual problem where we need to attend to our beliefs and values and the way they connect with our actions and how we live. So I hope that today is going to help us to do that and for us to find ways in which we can address the issues around us. <coughs> and there are a bit over two billion Christians in the world and we live in relationship with one another. Actually, most people in our world have a religious faith. It often doesn't feel like that in the secular West. Um, and the, But pluralism uh, and uh, secularism are only part of the story. Most people have a religious faith, and Christianity is still the largest of the world's religions. Uh, and so faith's a resource, partly because we know from our brothers and sisters in other parts of the world, particularly through our sister churches in companion dioceses or parishes or schools about what they're facing in their lives. I think we're the first generation that can't say we don't know what's going on and that brings a responsibility in terms of truth and addressing the issues of climate change and the environment. Uh, international conferences are taking place in which the world is trying to act together. It's pretty difficult in a complex political uh, world where uh, there are plenty of other competing agendas uh, but what we know is that climate change is the major thing that we need to address together and the intergovernmental uh, reports that are, are, are produced through the United Nations have been really clear about the urgency of what we need to address. Of course in a place like Durham we know that fossil fuels have done enormous good. Um, they've changed the way we live through the Industrial Revolution. Uh, they've increased our economic prosperity, our health and our mortality. We live longer than our predecessors. But that which has brought such benefit is now creating a global warming and climate change of a kind that is, well, disastrous, uh, creating a climate collapse and that we've got to produce urgent action in response. The Bible is uh, terrific in terms of how we might respond, that we might respond in the care of God's creation. Um, I mean, there's just delight, isn't there, in the beauty of creation uh, and the things that we enjoy. Um, the lilies of the field, the birds of the air. Uh, there's lots in the uh, Old Testament, in the Hebrew scriptures, which is about the uh, care of the land, the way we farm sustainably, the year of jubilee, uh, of not taking things for granted and of realising that we're not the centre of uh, existence. And in the first creation story, right at the beginning of the Bible, in, in that story in which God creates the earth in six days and on the seventh he rested, and it was good. And it was very good. Uh, and that sense in which we human beings uh, have a place to care for that. Of course, there's a tricky verse in that, uh, in which human beings are created to have dominion uh, over creation, lordship over creation. And I think for Christians in particular, the way to understand it is not to think that this is all for us and for our benefit, uh, but to think in terms of the servant dominion, the servant lordship, of Jesus Christ and, and of the way in which we need to care for the earth and steward the earth in such a way that, well, we love God, we love our neighbours, we love the creation God has given us and act as servants within it. It's about justice and a justice of the way in which we live with one another in this rapidly changing world. I think that one of the gifts that the present Pope, Pope Francis, has given us is the encyclical, the letter that he wrote in 2015 before the Paris Climate Change Talk, Laudato Si, Praise Be. Uh, he's using the 
canticles of St Francis, after whose name he took, um, to give praise for the gifts of creation and personalises them. It's a very, it, it's a very personal, intimate, relational sort of uh, uh, creation that we live in. And Pope Francis sets out an understanding of what it is for us to live in our common home, uh, thinking about the, uh, the laws of the house, the economy, the uh, care of the house, the ecology, uh, the ecumenism of this one house in which we live. Using that word eco, the one house, we, we live as people who have a common responsibility, all of us, not just Christians, not just people of faith, not just people of goodwill, but actually all of us. We've got to get on together in this one house that God has given us. Uh, and we can use the economy, the ecology uh, to do this, to live ecumenically in this one house. And Pope Francis said that, uh, this was a bit after Laudato Si, actually in the pandemic, we'll get through the pandemic if we care for one another, if we love one another, uh, we need to look after one another. It's love your neighbour, really. And we'll get through the climate crisis if we meditate. That's really surprising, I think. Um, if we meditate, because if we contemplate the beauty of God's creation, we won't consume it, we won't use it, we won't, we won't as it were, um, uh, just use it for my benefit our own benefit, but we'll know the beauty and majesty of creation. Uh, so I think that one thing that I want you to do today would be to find something to contemplate and to spend time looking at it, something beautiful or something that takes your eye and causes you to think carefully about the nature of the creation in which God has set us. I have on my desk a few stones which I picked up in, well, in the Holy Land and in Egypt. Um, one stone is from Mount Sinai, uh, so in Egypt, and that represents for me uh, the mountain of law. Uh, and there's plenty in the scriptures in terms of law about how we care for creation and live sustainably, but it's quite a hard-edged sort of uh, stone and it's a sort of deep red it's very distinctive uh, and then I've also got a much smoother stone which is from the Sea of Galilee uh, washed by water uh, and which is much easier to live with um, uh, it's gentler it's I think it's still demanding it's still hard it's still strong but it's somehow more rounded and smoother uh, and helps me to live, I think, in the way of Jesus Christ. Uh, and I've got a stone which is from the Judean desert, the place of temptation, the place of wilderness, uh, the place where the battles got worked out uh, and set apart, rather like we're set apart today. And it's here that I think we have to work out in relation to law and gospel what it is for us to be baptised Christians in the present day. I really like the way in which the Church of England is using the marks of mission that were worked out by the Anglican Communion in the 1980s. Um, they set out what it is for us to be Christians, to proclaim the good news of the kingdom, to baptise and nurture new believers, to teach, to respond to human need by loving service, to transform the unjust structures of society, to challenge violence of every kind and pursue peace and reconciliation. They were the four marks of mission that were first articulated by the Anglican Communion. And it took a while for people to realise that something was missing, that they didn't make sense without adding a fifth mark of mission to strive to safeguard the integrity of creation and sustain and renew the life of the earth. Well, that's what this quiet day is for us to do. 
it's the responsibility of those of us who are baptised Christians uh, to live in response to the world in which God has set us, this extraordinary gift of creation, uh, to use it wisely and responsibly in a way that isn't just about me, but is about loving service and the dominion of Christ, uh, the way in which we care for and love God, love our neighbour as ourselves, and don't forget to love the whole world in which we're set and in which we have to work and struggle in order to uh, deal with the difficulties of life uh, and to address the issues that confront us in our day uh, in terms of climate change and environmental collapse. Um, there's a political element, uh, there's a personal element. It needs our best brains, our scientists, our technicians, uh, and it needs our people of faith and large-heartedness, the great souls, in order to pray for this. So during the day, on this quiet day, using the scriptures, reflecting on the gift God has given us, and finding something to contemplate and to hold our attention with the beauty of the earth, let us pray, giving thanks for the gift of God's creation, praying for those most affected by climate change and the despoilation of the environment, the destruction of the environment, and asking God to give us the vision and the strength to live as people who know the gift that we've been given and the beauty of the earth, that we may love the life that God has given us and care for creation in all its fullness through Christ our Lord.